One of the reasons that biologists have been fascinated by Daphnia, and there's actually a very long history of this going back to the 1600s when it was first described as the water blob, that was its first name. One of the reasons people have been so interested in them is their, their uh, important role in ecosystems, but also they have a number of biological features that are somewhat unique. So for example, it's been known for a long time that they're extremely responsive to the environment. When there's cues in the environment, that they can actually change their physical appearance. A good example of this is when there's predators in the environment, either fish predators or other invertebrate predators. Many species of Daphnia can make uh, exaggerated helmets on top of their head. They can make long spines on their tail. And all of this is to deter the ability of predators to consume them. And so this phenotypic plasticity is a feature that's widely recognized in Daphnia and maybe um, a bit more exaggerated in this species than in any others. It's that um, connection to the environment and ability to accommodate it that has really been a, a feature of the way biologists have studied it for a very long time. Unlike in the past when you needed a large center with many, many sequencing machines and lots of personnel to do this, the technology for genome sequencing has increased so much and the cost has come so far down that it's now opening up a whole territory of genome biology which are organisms that have particularly um, relevant aspects to their biology for genome sequencing and genome biology. So we're no longer um, restricted to the well-established laboratory models like fruit flies or nematodes, the mouse. Now we can expand out and take advantage of the ecological attributes of organisms like Daphnia.